next episode of Joe of Painting. Uh, the Joe of Painting is what I said. Uh, my name is Joe, and this is who we're going to be painting today. Uh, we've moved into portraits. Um, they're just fun and challenging. Landscapes are a little too wet and sloppy. Um, but this, I'm using a more of a dry brush approach. Um, and luckily, the paints we're using are thinner as well. There's more oil in them, so you can really extend them over the canvas. Um, and I've had some really great success with that method. And it's doesn't it's not really tedious. It's uh, it really comes through for the way I want to paint, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, so to get started, we're using some titanium white, a mid yellow or cad yellow. Uh, we have scarlet. This is a burnt umber. This is a thalo blue and ivory black or Mars black, whatever you find. Um, and in case you want to paint along with us today, um, as far as supplies go, I got this paint set on Amazon. It's, it's from Davalu, I believe is the brand. 23 bucks, you get a whole range of colors. It's awesome. And I have a, a bunch of different brushes and uh, palette knives here. Um, some are Bob Ross, some are just from Michaels or any craft store near you. Um, using the Bob Ross easel. And we're working on a, I think this is a 20 by 18. Not really sure, but we're gonna dive right in. Let's see, I don't wanna start this. So what I did here is I just kind of constructed Mario out, and this is just the base sketch. You can see I have some some like guidelines here, um, you know, some indecisive mouth lines there. You know, you weren't, you're not really worried about getting it right, right off the bat. This is just to orient yourself to the canvas. Um, I am using a reference I have taped up over there. Um, so just for, just to keep things speedy, um, and so that we can, you know, create a cool painting as best to our, our ability as we can. Um, so whether, you know, if you want to paint along today, it doesn't have to paint, it could be colored pencil, whatever you got. Um, if you're here with me today, right now, watching this video, get some pen and paper out at least and start drawing. Okay, so I'm grabbing some umber, just a little bit because this is a pretty pungent color. And I'm just going to start working on his hair. And look how feisty that brown is. It's just like, let me get on the canvas. Yeah, I just, I just took a little bit, and look how much coverage that gave me. Luckily, that head, headband's going to be like a very dark gray, if not black. So any spillover from the brown can just get eaten by that black when it comes through. Okay, just grabbing a little more. And if you want to move to a smaller brush for these smaller locations go for it and yeah brushes they don't just go you know left right up and down you can you know these 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 chisel they're they come in different round and flat forms um, so that way you can again like push and twist and see how you can create sharp even sharper edges within that same brush it's almost like uh, in Photoshop when you choose the brush tool or any other tool, but then underneath, if you click and hold underneath it, there's a whole like palette of other tools that are re relative to that. That's what you're doing. You either are just using the brush, or you're clicking and holding, and you're selecting these different shapes that the brush can make. And the only way you really learn those is by just, again, spend you know you paint and you spend time with the process. You learn what works. You learn little tricks and alley-oops and stuff like that. That's the fun part, is having an idea, having a hypothesis, and applying it and then seeing it work, and then being able to do that again at will. So I am going to jump down. I'm going to clean this guy out and jump down to a smaller brush, and I'm going to use that same brown for his mustache. He's a mustache. And again, I'm learning how to anchor that brush into the canvas twist around and get some rounded brush strokes in there rather than again just left and right. It's sort of like a, if you play guitar like a hammer on. What's the other one to pull off? I don't know. But rather than just playing the note, you're walking it to the next one. I'm picking up was number eight. Yep. Number eight, it's a round chisel. We're just going to get this, this body in there.
try not to damage what I drew over here. I try and stay within the lines. And again, this is just the first wash. You see all that blue coming through. I like that color though. And when it interacts with the yellow, you get kind of like a green rim light. All right. What up, Doc? Cool. There's Mario's lobster claw. Whatever you want to call it. Well, it looks like the fucking image. All right. Who is this guy? All right. So, he's got a bit of a shadow over here from that knob. So this is like the handle of a stethoscope. As per that thing. As per the reference. So I still have a bluish gray in my brush. I'm gonna grab a little more white. I'm gonna start doing some mild highlights over here. Just blocking them in. Just grabbing some white. might find some reprieve from the shadow. Definitely gonna bring a little bit of white in there. Especially right about here. Just all the way through as a kind of like a middle gray. Towards the edges of the headband are more dark, that more dark black. And then right around here is a pretty big spotlight. Make sure it's dry, make sure you're not bringing any unwanted paint thinner in there. I'm going to work from the center out. It looks like a can of Pepsi, damn it. Which I guess isn't a bad thing. But I don't drink Pepsi. And again, this is just the first coat. It doesn't have to fill up. You want some breathing room there, especially if you're going to be working with white and giving it that really nice sheen. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to get right back into this painting. Do not go anywhere. Unless you have to, but try not to. Is your credit bad? Non-existent? You're contemplating taking too many pills? Well, then come on down to Negotiating Neil's Mitsubishi. We're slashing prices in half. Half! <sighs> Can you fucking believe? I mean, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but uh, we're done now, right? <laughs> All right, welcome back. Um, during the break, I went ahead and uh, put in a light blue sky behind Mario. Um, that would have been very time consuming for the video, so I just went ahead and did it. Um, and the way I did that is, I took a little bit of my liquid white and just some of my, I actually used a cerulean blue. So if you're using the Devolu paint pack, it's in there. If not, you can use your Thalo blue, um, whatever kind of deep oceany blue you have. Um, and I did about maybe three or four tablespoons of the liquid white. The previous painting when I did this, I made too much of the color I needed, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you've got a lot of territory, but that liquid white is real thin. There's um, a good amount of oil content in it. So it really will just run all over the canvas. So you don't need a lot because it goes a long way. So I made a little bit first just to see. Um, and I got the job done. And I still have some left over because you can see I didn't go all the way in to his face yet because that paint is wet. And I'm still doing a lot of construction here with Dr. Mario. Um, so I don't really want to risk bringing in um, that really light, really heavy white blue because um, it will really influence my color. So I, I brought it up as close as I could, created a nice even coat, um, and then once I get Dr. Mario where I want him, I'm probably going to bring that blue in, um, really tighten it up, and then I'll go in at the very end, and I'll do my black outline and really make him pop. Um, so yeah, I'm going to set this aside for now. 
Let's do it somewhere that's not getting paint thinner. This should be okay. That's good there. Okay. Um, and yeah, and I, I use the cerulean blue from that paint set, but like I said, if you use phthalo blue or whatever kind of base blue you have, mid blue, um, just use, you know, add a little bit at a time and get the blue you want because if you add too much, that blue is just going to disappear in that white. That white's pretty powerful though. That Well, it's not a titanium white, but um, it's pretty milky and it will really stretch that blue out and give you a nice kind of robin's egg or sky blue. Um, but yeah, add a little bit at a time. You can always add more. You can't take away. And you don't want to end up with a bunch of paint that you can't use or you don't want to use because that's just a waste. But it happens sometimes, so don't fret. All right, so to get back into the painting, I'm going to get my little pencil brush and we're going to start working on his uh, shirt, tie, and stethoscope cord. Um, and you can see, like, this, a lot of that yellow is still po uh, poking through. Um, again, I was just blocking in. I kind of ran away with this coat here. I just wanted to jump right into it because that's a huge portion of um, Dr. Mario. So I just wanted to get that started. Um, the intent was that really kind of deep, kind of charcoal gray. Um, but I got this nice kind of bluish green, kind of like an aqua aqua green-ish black thing going on here, and I really liked it. It, seemed, it was very becoming of Dr. Mario. Um, so we're going to leave it like that. Um, I have a lot of gradients that I need to really sculpt out, and a lot of blacks and shadows I need to commit, as well as this threshold between this black and this lighter color, and I really need to make these, you know. What you're going for is, you know, how you decide how you blend there is your, is your it's a texture, essentially. It's your, uh, it's your material. So um, if this was a burlap sack, that would probably suffice. But since this is a nice, smooth kind of slack coat, you really want a nice, even gradient. And we'll do that to the best of our ability. Again, these are just sketches. These are just for fun. Um, so yeah, let's jump right back in. And I'm going to go ahead and start with, I have this scarlet over here. And I'm going to go, oop, wrong place. Sorry, yellow. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start, again, blocking in that color. I'm using my little tiny number one round pencil brush. Right now we're just establishing the territory of the tie, the form, the figure of the tie. And again, have, have fun. This isn't a chore. This should be, you're an adventurer right now. And the reason, you know, we choose pictures and references is because it's a good way, again, to see how your, your mind interprets that image and how it passes the information to your hand and then onto the canvas. Art isn't about this thing. It's about that conversation, that relationship between this thing and then up here. And the practice of art, if you pay attention, if your goal is to get better as an artist, is to keep track of that of that conversation, the things you learn, the failures. And it, you know, it really shows to, or it really pays to stick with it. Even if you paint painting after painting that you're not happy with, they all lead up to you getting better and being more efficient and confident in executing on these paintings. Or like, you know, Bob occasionally would, you know, he's a landscape painter and occasionally he would try to throw in a portrait or a figure, and that just wasn't his cup of tea. That's all right, so he sticks to where his strengths are, but he still dares to venture into the territory he's not completely comfortable with because he's an artist. He's helping nobody by doing the same thing over and over again exclusively. All right, this tie is shaping up. There he is. Now he looks like a doctor. He had this like flying saucer hovering here for a while. Man, Dr. Mario is the bomb. Especially on Smash. When I can tell my when I'm playing Smash with friends and I can tell my thumbs are really energetic and feeling squirrely. That's when I'm Dr. Mario, because he doesn't hit hard. He hits smart. Same thing with straight up Mario as well. But 
if you can learn to use that flag attack and send some big some big hits back at your enemies it is so satisfying all right doing my best to paint within the lines and again those yellow those yellow lines are there to guide you they're not final conclusions so you can definitely push and pull that form as you see fit as that sketch starts to turn more and more into a 3D figure. Okay. That was a relatively thin coat. We'll, we'll let this dry a little bit and move on. And then we'll come back and probably add another coat and get it to a point where it's ready for some highlights and shadows. I'm going to clean that one out in my odorless paint thinner bucket. Make sure it's all that pigment's out, all the extra paint thinner's out, and make sure your brush is clean and dry. No paint thinner on your painting. Now I'm going to jump into some black. Just pull some out here. And so you can see I have this line here. That's sort of my guideline for the stethoscope. It kind of wraps around his neck, and then he's got that single cord running down to the stethoscope itself. Um, we can do that all at the end, especially when this is black. I can just get some pure white on there and run that white right through the black and create like a middle gray. Um, you know, just something kind of like that plastic coated cord around. Again, it doesn't have to be picture perfect. It just has to communicate an idea. That's your goal. It's not about painting the stethoscope. It's about painting shapes and gradients that say something specific. And in that case, it will say stethoscope cord. That's the hope anyway. That's the objective. Ooh. Now be careful with your black because this is a powerful, powerful pigment. While I have some black on the brush, I'm just going to go down here and strengthen up some of these shadows. That paint ran a bit thin when I was painting it in, but it's all right. Now you can see this kind of scratchy um, gradient. I'm just kind of softly feathering it a little more. And creating that smoother gradient. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just have fun with it. Explore what it means to turn that scratchy gradient into a softer gradient. What do I need to do as the artist to make that happen? And really, it's a lot of it is by touch. You just got to feel it out. And I'm still just moving around. <clears throat> with this little pencil brush with my black paint. I'm just touching up on some shadows on this coat. And really just trying to bring it home. Because I really like where it's at now. So I'm just getting this to a point to where I feel comfortable with it. Then I'll move on to his face and then go back. You know, push and pull until you get, you know, to that final stage. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, we'll fix up this, these fingers here. So this shadow of the stethoscope um, gets lighter the further away it go, gets from the actual stethoscope. But right here along this edge, it's a pretty hardy shadow. And this is an opportunity to really establish the roundness of that. And that black will add another focal point right there. So it'll keep those contrasts are, your eye picks those up more vividly than these really soft gradients. So you kind of station those contrasts around your painting to give it sort of an anchored foundation. That's what I'm doing anyway. Further on that thought, it kind of gives it 
those, having those focal points everywhere gives it a sense of balance. Because if you have too many over here and not enough over here, then you're like, well, why is there so much emphasis over here? But these things really give you a sense. They're like uh, landmarks, essentially. Places that pull your eye, and then your brain thinks about that area. And then it stitches all of them together. And there's not a lot of hard lighting going on on this stethoscope or this little mirror. I don't know what you call this thing. Dr. Mario's headgear. Don't, yeah, isn't it like a little mirror or something so people can see themselves? Or, it's like if you're being pill pushed by an Italian plumber. Yeah. Having a reference makes all the difference, especially when you're getting started and learning techniques. It's good just to remove as many obstacles as you can. And then once you start picking up the tricks of the trade, you can move on and invent your own paintings. You can do both at the same time, but as far as skill building goes, I think using a reference is a good idea. I love that titanium white. I know I say that a million times, but it's just such an awesome material. There he is. It's like we just turned on the animatronic Dr. Mario and his eyes lit up and he said, it's a me. Or something like that. And again, I'm taking my time being careful because I'm right on the border of that titanium white, which really likes to talk with other color. Basketball. Uh, they said it's coming out April something. Let me see. It's like I think they did it for March Madness, and it's coming out in April. <laughs> it's like Rocket League. Get your yeah. shit together. The twenty six. Cool. So we have a nice little gradient from that that uh, tint we just mixed up. Kind of like a orangish brown highlight. And we just kind of walked it down into that pure umber. All right, guys and gals, that's all the time we have for today. But don't fret, because I'm going to get this finished up. And then right after we uh, cut away from this episode, you will see the final image. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about this one. I'm glad you stuck around. Um, what's up, Dr. Mario? I think I probably said that about a billion times this episode. But it keeps coming more and more alive. It's great. So, yes, yeah, stick around. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, we have some exciting things on the horizon for the Joe of Painting series. Um, and once we know exactly what that means, we'll let you know. Um, but until then, and until the next episode, uh, keep on drawing and painting. And have fun with this. It's not a chore. Have fun. This is an experiment, an adventure, an escape. Enjoy. I'll see you next time. Thank you.